Here's something brief for those of you who are interested in when to use mockist style testing and when to use classicist style testing. So here's what I want to say essentially. If you don't know the outcome, you have to mock. Expressed in a different way. When results are emergent, you have to use mocking. If you're not familiar with the differences between classist style testing and mockist style testing, or integration testing versus unit testing, then I highly suggest you check out my two other videos on those topics. I've linked them in the description. But moving on, here's the argument. In classicist testing, or integration testing that aren't mocking the boundaries, you essentially have to know the outcome of any particular interaction in order to test that interaction. Of course, that makes perfect sense if you think about it. The whole idea of integration testing is that you have one unit under test and given some global state or a set of particular members that you pass it, you expect a certain result. So if you think about it in terms of the classic prepare, act, assert, you are preparing some kind of state making some kind of action and then asserting that you get a particular outcome. And if you don't know what the outcome is, then what are you supposed to assert? Now I understand that having an outcome that is unknown may sound like a contrived example and may sound like something that doesn't happen. So let me give you a concrete scenario. So I work with agent-based modeling and in agent-based modeling, the whole idea is that we are looking at emergent phenomena. But what does emergent phenomena mean? Essentially, it means that we know the micro interactions, but we don't know the macro outcome of these micro interactions at scale. <clears throat> now, I won't dig into the depths of agent-based modeling. Let's do that some other time in case you're interested. But essentially, the point is that we know the processes of some things. We know how some particular things interact with each other, but it's not necessarily known what the result of series of these interactions will be. What I find particularly interesting is that this is not necessarily a question of non-determinism. It's not necessarily a question of that the interactions are non-deterministic. So it's not necessarily a question of that the results of the interactions are impossible theoretically to be calculated. But rather, it's a question of that calculating the outcome might be significantly tedious or infeasible. So if you think about that, I assume that actually makes sense. So if you have lots of dependencies or you, if you have lots of interacting objects, at some point it's going to be very difficult to calculate the outcome. Think about, for example, the classic physics three-body problem, where you in space have three bodies that exert gravitational forces upon each other, which leads us to a situation where calculating the positions of these three bodies after a long period of time becomes very tricky, if not to say infeasible, simply put because of the butterfly effect. I'm sure you've seen that movie with Ashton Kutcher, right? A butterfly flaps its wings in one end of the world, which causes an earthquake at the other end of the world. Essentially, when you're dealing with highly complex systems, then the effect of a small change might be non-linear in the sense that the effect of a small change might be massive in a different location because of all these small interactions. Which again, in the case of agent-based modeling, puts us in a situation where we, yes, can calculate the outcome of a particular set of interactions, but it's possible that we don't actually want to because of the infeasibility. It's possible that we don't actually want to because it will take serious amounts of time to figure out these calculations. And if we later down the road change some of these small parts, i.e. Uh, the butterfly flapping its wings, then the outcome will be completely different, which means that all of our tests will be wrong. So instead, we simply use mocking. Instead of doing classic integration testing, instead of using real dependencies, we just check what we know. We check that the different objects are interacting with each other according to specification. So to sum up, if the outcome is emergent, if the outcome is unknown, then it may be preferable to use mocking rather than classicist testing, rather than integration testing. It may be preferable to mock all of the boundaries and check that we are composing our objects correctly and check that the interactions are working correctly, that all of the units behave correctly in isolation and that they are composed together correctly, rather than doing classicist testing, rather than doing full integration testing. That's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.